for a yet more important matter is at issue, which is the integrity of that whole body of moral and legal precepts which we know as human rights. The terrible lie that has been told here today will have terrible consequences. Not only will people begin to say, indeed they have already begun to say, that the United Nations is a place where lies are told, but, but far more serious, grave, and perhaps irreparable harm will be done to the cause of human rights. The harm will arise first because it will strip from racism the precise and abhorrent meaning that it still precariously holds today. How will peoples of the world feel about racism, about the need to struggle against it, when they are told that it is an idea so broad as to include the Jewish National Liberation Movement? As this lie spreads, it will do harm in a second way. Many of the members of the United Nations owe their independence in no small part to the notion of human rights as it has spread from the domestic sphere to the international sphere and exercised its influence over the old colonial powers. We are now coming into a time when that independence is likely to be threatened again. There will be new forces some of them arising now, visible now, new prophets and new despots who will justify their actions with the help of just such distortions of words as we have sanctioned here today. Today we have drained the word racism of its meaning. Tomorrow terms like national self-determination and national honor will be perverted in the same way to serve the purposes of conquest and exploitation. And when these claims begin to be made, as they have already begun to be made, it is the small nations of the world whose integrity will suffer. And how will the small nations of the world defend themselves? And on what grounds will others be moved to defend and protect them? when the language of human rights, the only language by which the small can be defended, is no longer believed and no longer has a power of its own. There is this danger, and then a final danger, which is the most serious of all, which is that the damage we now do to the idea of human rights and the language of human rights could well be irreversible. The idea of human rights as we know it today is not an idea which has always existed in human affairs. It is an idea which appeared at a specific time in the world and under very special circumstances. It appeared when European philosophers of the 17th century began to argue that man was a being whose existence was independent from that of the state and that he need join a political community only if he did not lose by that association more than he gained. From this very specific political philosophy stemmed the idea of political rights, of claims that the individual could justly make against the state. It was because the individual was seen as so separate from the state that he could make legitimate demands upon it. That was the philosophy from which the idea of domestic and international rights sprang. But most of the world does not hold with that philosophy now. Most of the world believes in newer modes of political thought, in philosophies that do not accept the individual as distinct from and prior to the state, in philosophies that therefore do not provide any justification for the idea of human rights and philosophies that have no words by which to explain their value. If we destroy the words 
that were given to us by past centuries, we will not have words to replace them, for philosophy today has no such words. But there are those of us who have not forsaken these older words, still so new to much of the world, not forsaken them now, not forsaken them, not here, not anywhere, not ever. The United States of America declares that it does not acknowledge, it will not abide by, it will never acquiesce in this infamous act.